If you have clicked on this video, then I'm going to assume that you are somewhere in your journey with bug bounties where you're making roughly about a thousand dollars monthly or on a regular basis. And now you're ready to take it to the next step by scaling your bug bounty skills and making money regularly with bug bounties means that you've probably figured out your methodology and how to look for vulnerabilities. And you've also kind of recognized what your niche is. Your niche could typically be the vulnerabilities you find, your automation, the ways you look for vulnerabilities. And honestly, that is all personal and it doesn't matter what kind of bugs you look for as long as you're making it work and you're making your time and knowledge work for you. I know some really good hackers who have found their niche and they're not really technical bugs. They're looking for authorization issues. They're looking for things that are logical flaws and just business logic vulnerabilities that is paying them. But I also know some really good hackers who are looking for server side vulnerabilities, IDORs, XSS, and honestly, a mix of both is always good. But I want to make it a point that it doesn't have to be one or the other. You can pick what vulnerabilities look appealing to you and make them part of your methodology. But now that you have done all of this, you're making money regularly, you need to scale and go from a thousand or whatever your monthly income is to the next step up 10,000, 20,000. 30,000. In this video specifically, I'm going to set the goal to talk about how do you go to $10,000 and make that your goal. But honestly, you can actually change that number to whatever you're comfortable with. And maybe you can go higher or lower depending on where you are, but you do need to have a goal. And you want to make that 10K goal happen because once you hit that $10,000 in a month, you're going to realize that this number is no longer impossible. So by achieving your goal once, you're going to realize because you have done it once already, it is achievable again. And that alone is going to put push you to want to do more, do better, and also achieve higher goals. And before you come and say, hey, with bug bounties, I know bug bounties are luck. You have to be lucky to find these kinds of vulnerabilities. Let me explain. Luck comes in a lot of different areas of life, not with just bug bounties. It could be anything you do in life. Luck plays a huge role. But luck doesn't just show up by you just sitting around on your phone, scrolling through Reddit, playing video games, and not actually putting in the work to get these bounties. Luck only plays a role in this situation when you're putting in the work or in the bug bounty example, you find an asset that nobody else has tested for. You find a bypass, or maybe you find a functionality that is vulnerable that nobody else has found it. That is where luck plays a game. You have to put in the effort and look for vulnerabilities to get lucky and be able to score a bounty. I understand a lot of times people say it's luck. I honestly think a lot of my work has been luck and I've been very lucky to be able to do this, but it didn't just happen by me sitting around and doing nothing about it. It happened because I kept pushing through and I kept digging until I found something that got me paid and just built momentum for me to keep going. Now we need to talk about how to scale and go from a thousand to ten thousand dollars. How do you actually accomplish that? Luck aside, having those goals aside and actually believing in yourself and knowing that the number is possible. Those are great. Now we're going to talk about the bug bounty specific ways to get you to that 10K, 20 or $30,000. Well, there are two things you need to do in here. If you're making money regularly on these bug bounty platforms, that means that eventually you're going to start getting invited to private programs. Private programs are a really good way to just get more money, but also get more reputation on the platforms in order to get invited to additional programs. So we need you to really focus on finding a couple of good private or even public bug bounty programs where you can hack on just like you were between your zero to a thousand dollars and keep looking for vulnerabilities to expand your access. In addition to gaining access to more additional programs, you also need to become an anchor hacker on one to three bug bounty programs. An anchor hacker is typically a hacker that just goes back to a bug bounty program. They know the ins and outs of this bug bounty program, and they know the patterns of mistakes that this company has made. So for example, one of the public programs that I can talk about is Airbnb. I was an anchor hacker on Airbnb, and I knew all the different mistakes that we're making before I became an anchor hacker. I learned what the platform looked like. I know what the permissions were like. I know what the mistakes that we're making. I know those patterns. And I kept just going after the same pattern over and over and over until eventually I got tired of it and I quit. That is actually a really good way to have a big part of your $10,000 goal to come from a program or multiple programs that you're an anchor hacker on. And the reason why I say that is the times when you find a new bug bounty program that you go into your burnout periods, you're not finding anything, you're not getting lucky, you can always fall back on going to these bug bounty programs that you know if we put in the 
work and effort, you're going to find something to get you out of those unlucky times when you're not finding vulnerabilities. The second thing you want to do when it comes down to learning how to get from zero to the $10,000 point is to learn how to automate a lot of those tasks. I know in the past, I've always pushed you to stay away from recon and automation. That's because I've been wanting to get you to learn how to look for vulnerabilities without relying on scanners, nuclear templates, and things that are going to hold you back from learning the basics before you get here. But now that you're here, you need to start learning how to automate things. And if you're watching this, you want to learn how I automate things, drop me a comment, just say automate or bug bounty automation video and I'll make it happen. But you really need to learn how to automate things. This is from getting your asset discovery where you can monitor a company and you can actually look for the new supplements that are being issued every week or every day. You have it going through a loop. I made a video for it. You can just go out on my channel, and look for it. Maybe I'll even link it down below, but you really want to become good at automating these tasks or maybe creating a discord bot where it pops up on Discord and says new asset found. So you are the first to find these assets that you can hack on. So you want to be first when an asset is spun up and a domain has been issued and it's accessible by anybody out there. So that's one of the ways to do it. But the second thing you want to do is you want to learn how to monitor assets. This could be the same way. Once you have a list of all your different assets, you want to write a script that is going to do particular scans, whether it's looking for particular endpoints or just monitoring the main page page or the first index or the root folder of that page and see if any changes have been implemented. You can easily do this with HTTPX, for example, you can have it in a loop, you can have it hit the root folder and look at the response size and see if that changes. And if that does change, use something like a new by Tom nom nom and have it loop into a notify, for example, and send you a notification that the size of the index has changed. So for example, a lot of times you're going to find a domain that it has an index that's a white screen, or it could be a default Nginx or Apache page, for example, if you're continuously monitoring that, and as soon as an application is developed, Developed and push that asset, you're going to get notified. And this is where automation and recon comes into play. The whole point of doing automation isn't to run nuclear scans and look for vulnerabilities across an entire infrastructure. You want to leave those alone. I personally think it's way too saturated, way too many people are running the same templates, but if you are monitoring assets and waiting for them to have functionality available to them, and you are the first to find it, then let me tell you, you're going to get lucky and find some really, really amazing vulnerabilities. And last but not least, I'm going to always send this in any video that I make, regardless of what part of your journey you are, you want to find a lot of like-minded people, whether you're a part of a Discord, Twitter group, whatever it is, you want to find people that are in the same boat as you. Maybe you can even find somebody in the comment section of this video, but you really want to find who to work with. Wherever you are, having somebody to hack with, you're going to learn from each other, but also you're going to have somebody to celebrate the highs, but also have someone to talk to when you're not finding vulnerabilities and help get each other out of the down parts of doing bug bounties. That's it. I think this is a great place for us to stop. Let me know what you think. Drop me a comment. Let me know if you want to see more videos like this. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to go even further and support the channel, subscriptions and memberships are open. It's only $5 and it all goes into maintaining our YouTube channel together. All right, that's it. I will see you all in next week's video. Peace.